Okay, so experiments seven and eight I'm going to do together. They're smear preparation and simple staining. Um, and the purpose of these experiments is to show how a stain on back, show how to stain a bacteria on slides to view under a microscope. So, um, in the real world, what you would do, quote unquote, uh, is to swab an area, and then you would grow them on some type of medium, and then you would take isolated colonies on that medium. And then you would put them on a slide and um, stain them and then view them under a microscope. Okay, and so this, this allows you to see this, the colony morphology after isolating colonies and then, um, and then see the cellular morphology underneath the microscope. So now you can isolate these colonies on a plate or you can use a broth if you use a differential broth, but we're going to get into that later. Um, or you can uh, use uh, a slant. Uh, you just want to make sure that you get a pure sample. Um, and usually plates are the way to go. Because uh, you can isolate really easily on, on, like, uh, on a plate. So for staining, the reason why you stain is because bacteria you can't really see very well underneath the microscope in and of themselves. Um, they're made of 90% water, and so you're pretty much looking at water that is like, which is clear. Um, and so you may be able to see the edge if you look really, really closely, but staining them allows you to see the bacteria. Um, and so if you just put a stain inside of a cell, then that's called a simple stain because you're not really doing anything with that. You just see the bacteria. A differential stain allows you to see them because you are staining them, but it also allows you to distinguish one bacteria from another. An example of this is um, is gram staining. So um, gram staining, you get your pink ones are negative and then your purple ones are positive, um, but it allows you to differentiate. That's where you get differential staining from. It allows you to differentiate gram positive from gram negative bacteria. Um, and so those are the two different types of staining. Um, okay, so in these labs, it did get kind of confusing. So in experiment six, we had a mixed culture that was labeled streak that was sitting on the tables. And that um, streak broth, it was a broth culture. Um, that streak broth culture was a combination of E. coli, Staphylococcus epidermidis, and M. lutens. Um, and what you were supposed to do is take your, well, okay, so Experiment uh, six was to isolate colonies. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take that street culture and then isolate each of those three different colonies and see the different, because each of them have very distinct um, colony morphologies. You're supposed to isolate each one of those. And then after you isolated them, you're supposed to take an individual colony and then put it on a slide to view underneath the microscope and then you stain and you're supposed to stain it and then put it underneath the slide and see the cellular morphologies. Um, each of the two different so there were three, there weren't two. Sorry. Um, but that's what we were supposed to do. We kind of messed up a little bit because we in experiment six we um, isolated our hand cultures and that's very bad. Um, but that's the logic behind experiment six. And so experiment seven was to actually do the, um, do the stain. So this is when you actually took the isolated colonies and then did a stain on them. So you stained your isolated colonies from experiment six, but then you also had um, a specific bacteria for each position at the bench. So that was one of those things where like um, in the lab manual, it has like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then each letter corresponds to a position on the bench, and then you had to like stain a specific one. So each person had a specific bacteria that they had to stain as well. So you're supposed to take one stain of an isolated colony from experiment six, and then one stain of the one assigned to you in experiment seven. And so you're supposed to do a, a simple stain of each, and then you get um, what they look like. So 
what happens is with okay so when you get a stain you look underneath the microscope you get um, these different types of cell morphologies and so you have co coxis um, bacillus spirillium spirochete vibrio plio pleomorphic yeah and then you have different like groupings of them as well and so you have diplococcus diplo means two and so two Staphylococcus, that means like a cluster. Um, streptococcus means like a, a chain or a line of them. And then micrococcus is when they like form little tetrads or octomers or whatever you want to say. Um, and then you, you're, for your rod shape, you have chains of rods. So it's like, it's like, it's like your chains of bas basilisk, but instead they're rods. There are no, um, you can have a diplobacillus technically I guess but it would just be the it'd be like these two together without this third one um, but I don't know if that's a thing we studied but um you'll never have like a cluster of chains if you have a cluster of chains that means you didn't spread the um, bacteria out enough and that's one of the important things I mentioned in the last video is that you want to make sure to spread your bacteria out when you're doing the slide because um, they all cluster up and you can't really see the individual cell morphologies. Um, so you'll never have a cluster of chains. You'll always have either just random chains or a string of chains. Um, and that's the general um, morphologies. Now when you do this you get the results that look like this. So in your follow-up it'll have another one that says like front, it'll have like another place at the very top that says where you put your results from experiment six um, but those two Escherichia coli that was it was Escherichia coli and Staphylococcus epidermidis and so I just put them here um, but depending on what you had it um, it depends on what you put in that top one but anyway so streptic a lot of these are kind of self-explanatory oftentimes you see that the first name is the name of is like the shape of the thing. So Streptococcus mutans, you know, is a Streptococcus cell grouping, and so you know, coccus is very is also um, the cell shape. And so you get something like this. Sorry, it's kind of small, but um, you can see these like <coughs> strings of um, circles throughout the whole entire throughout the thing. So you see how much room is in between all this stuff as well. Like, um, I guess as kind of com compared to this, um, this room is good because it allows you to see that it's, it's streptococcus. And that's another important thing about spreading out and diluting your, um, your cultures or diluting your, uh, stain, your, when you put it onto your glass, your brain fart, sorry. It's not your... Your streaks, your slides, that's what it's called. Okay, so you take this and you, um, and it allows you to see, because they're so spread out, it allows you to see that these are um, streptococcus. If they're all bunched up, then you couldn't really see this very well. Um, and so that's another important thing. So again, Staphylococcus epidermidis is Staphylococcus. And it looks something like this. You can kind of see the groupings. Like right here you have a group. And right here you have a group. Um, and here you have a group. Bacillus subtilis. They're random back, um, bacillus. Those are kind of very stereotypical. Um, <clears throat> as compared to Escherichia coli. Or Escherichia coli. Um, and that it's kind of. They're kind of smaller here. So I put small bacillus. Um, but again. Uh, so just compare, yeah, it just, these are a little bit smaller than these. Um, Spirosoma, Spira, Spirilli, it kind of works. Um, and they're spiral shaped. Bacillus megaterium, megaterium means that they're kind of larger. Um, these aren't really to scale, all of these aren't to scale. Um, and so if you actually look at them, these would be a little bit bigger than both of these. Um, so they're large bacillus, but again, those are streptobacillus, and so they actually form um, kind of chains. Um, streptomycetes, color color, um, that one's kind of 
misleading because there's it says strepto there. Um, but those are just um, basilisks. Uh, they are got some filaments that, if you look at them closely. Um, and the last one is Dinococcus radiolarens. That should sound familiar from the UV one, but we'll get to that later. Um, Dinococcus, they form, oh, I've got a picture here, but they form um, diplococci or tetrads, so they look a little bit like this with the micrococcus stuff. Um, and so that's it for those experiments. Um, again, we're just looking at um, the cellular morphology, and then we did um, the smear preparations from the aseptic technique thing. So um, that's it.